Now we get to drill some holes in the body to mount all of our hardware. And we're going to start with that wire loop that we made. So we'll put a little guide mark right on the belly, right in the middle. And you want to leave enough room on both sides so that you can put your bigger holes for your weights. And then we'll drill all the way through. So we'll have one of those loops on top and bottom. And you don't necessarily need to make those guide marks um, if you've got a really good brad point drill bit. But our loop fits, so we're good to go on to the nose. And then if you'd like your hook to angle one way or another, just move your drill bit and angle it back or forward or however you'd like it to sit. So we'll make a little guide mark. And then we'll drill in. And keeping that at the angle that we want for our hook. And then we'll move on to the tail. And the tail is a little bit more difficult because we have that tail fin with the hook in it. And so what I've done is I pre-assembled the hook kind of super glued it into the tail for temporary uh, until we get this ready. So I want it to kind of angle downward just a little bit. So we'll just kind of keep the drill at that angle and drill in. And then I want that tail fin, tail fin to fit in just right. So I'm going to saw a slot across there and we'll widen it out just a little bit. Hopefully we'll get this just right so it'll fit in there. test fit it just a little bit and it's not quite there. It's a little bit big on the metal parts on the outside so I took it over to the grinder and ground it a little bit and now we have a perfect fit in there. Okay, now we just have two more holes to drill and they are for our weights so that this thing will sink. We want it to go down into the hole in the ice and not just float on them. So we'll make a couple little marks here and this bigger drill bit was a little bit harder to get it from wandering so just be careful. You kind of have to guide it exactly where you want it to go. And we'll drill those holes just deep enough for the weight to sit inside. And if you don't get the weight in all the way, it's easy enough to file off the lead weight. Okay, so we'll get those holes done. And then we'll be ready for glue up. And I use some five minute epoxy for this part and we'll put out the epoxy and the hardener and mix them together. And you're going to want to use a glue that uh, sets up fairly quickly uh, but doesn't not too quickly so that you have some time to work with it. Uh, but you just don't want to be holding those parts in there forever. So we're going to put some on the tail fin and then we'll put some with the toothpick on the body. Get as much as we can in the hole there fit those parts together and they fit really well so I'm not too worried about this. And then I'm just going to kind of fill a little bit of epoxy in there to make it a good strong connection. And we'll just kind of wipe off the excess. Okay, then we'll just spread some glue onto our the middle of our loops. Go ahead and push those through the body and there'll be some excess glue here so we'll wipe that off and then I'll take a toothpick and kind of fill in the gap on the top where there isn't very much glue and wipe the excess of that away So we'll get our front hook in. And we'll just use a toothpick and put in as much as we can and then we'll set that hook in place. And this is going to roll around a little bit so we'll get as much glue as we can there and then we'll set it up in the vise and I just used a block to hold that hook in place while everything dries and sets up. Just need to put those weights in now, so with a little bit of super glue in the bottom, we'll just kind of pound those in there. Put them inside, and then I just pounded them in with a rod, and that worked pretty well. 
then I just kind of filled up the rest with some th thin super glue and a little bit of a gap I put a little sawdust and super glue to kind of fill up everything Once all of our glues are cured, we need to do a little bit more smoothing. There's always some drips and things we need to take care of. So I'll file down the super glue and the lead weights and make sure the whole belly is smooth. And then we'll go over it with some sandpaper and make sure that we get the body of it smooth once again and ready for paint. And one more thing I'm going to do before we start painting is I'm going to tape off the hooks and I'm going to tape off the tail fin and then we're going to put some white spray paint on it and you can use any spray paint this is just kind of a primer coat it's not necessarily a primer uh, but use what you have in the shop it'll work so I did two coats of the spray paint Now I wanted to use some special glow-in-the-dark paints that I got a long time ago that I've been waiting to use on a project and I thought this would be the perfect one uh, since it's going to be underwater and in the dark. Uh, but as I started to paint these on, I figured out that they're just not the right type of paint for this type of project. kind of went on gloopy and never was smooth and I just couldn't get it to look very good at all. And so. I ended up just wiping it all away and we're going to go to our old model paints. I found these sitting around the garage and if you can use something like this then that's great. I think that a spray would be even better and there's lots of different patterns you can make. I'm going to try and make something that's a uh, rainbow trout. So we're going to put some really dark, like a dark green on top, kind of an olive green and we'll set that aside to dry and then next we'll go with an orange on the bottom we're going to kind of go for the spawning colors I guess even though this is a little minnow but uh, we'll go for that orange belly and hopefully that'll give us enough brightness too that it'll give the fish something to see I know that especially trout see colors really well so we're just kind of blend that in to the green and set that aside to dry as well and the good thing about the model paints is they didn't take that long to dry um, a spray paint would go much faster and I know there's a lot of sprays that you can use in lures okay so if you notice a rainbow trout they've all got kind of a pink stripe down the middle or like a red band so we're going to do a pink stripe and all I did was dip a toothpick and run that across. And then the back side of your paintbrush makes a pretty good little dauber. And so we're going to make a big white for the eye. And I know that you can purchase stickers and things like that for lures, um, but I'm trying to use what I have around the shop. Okay. We'll set that aside and let it dry, and then we'll go for the black. And take the back of my paintbrush again, and we'll leave a little dot. And we'll try that one more time. And then we can do the other side. And a trout has a lot of spots on it, and most of the spots are up near the back and not towards the belly. And so we're going to sand the edge of a toothpick off so we can get some kind of round little dots, and we'll just place those all over in kind of a random pattern. I kind of went overboard and splattered a little bit, and it's fine. As long as you got different sizes and different streaks. And things like that and then I couldn't put a scale pattern on this particular lure uh, 
because I didn't have like a silvery spray paint or anything like that to run through some mesh so I decided to just make some little silver spots as well so we're gonna get a silver paint and then the same type of thing with a toothpick we'll just run a few silver spots all over this lure hopefully that'll give us enough flash that the trout or whatever I'm fishing for will be able to see that and take a bite now we just have to put a clear coat onto our lure and I'm gonna use an epoxy that I had around and this one's like a one hour epoxy and it's pretty liquid and if I were you I'd go with something like a 20 minute or a half hour epoxy if you can get a hold of it but this will work so what we're going to do is mix that up really good and I'm going to use what I'm going to call a disposable paintbrush and we'll dip it in there and just kind of loop that all over the outside of our lure and what this is going to do is seal and protect it and make sure that the water can't get inside and it's also going to give us a nice glass smooth finish on the outside so we'll get as much of it on there as we can without dripping too much and then I've made a little tool out of my daughter's old rock tumbler and I put a shaft and turned a wheel with a rubber band so that we can turn this around and it goes around about 100 rpm and it'll make it so it won't drip or the glue won't run or anything like that it'll kind of keep it in the same position so I ran that that way until the glue set up and then I let it sit and cure the rest of the way then we have our lure. The last thing we have to do is put our treble hook on the bottom. And so I'm going to get a split ring. And we'll put it onto our bottom loop for our treble hook. And as that split ring is still open a little bit, I'll lay the treble hook on there. And it's a little tricky to do. It's pretty small and it's hard to do without poking your fingers. But once you get it, get them both in there, I just rotate that split ring around until our treble hook is mounted. And then I have to remove the, the tape, and I had to scrape a little glue that went under the tape, and we have our finished lure ready to try out. I can't believe that I can make something like an ice fishing lure on my wood lathe. So there's our finished product. We got it all done. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. To me, it kind of looks like a child painted this thing, but that's okay because I'm a kid at heart. And what really matters is are the fishies gonna like it? I'm hoping to get out pretty soon and make a video of me trying to catch some fish. I'm glad that you watched this video today and I thank you for your support. I'm Jason Geyser and this is Geyser Wood Turner where I do wood turning videos. And I have a lot of ideas and projects that I wanna share with you. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss a single one of my videos, hit that notification bell. And one of the things I'm into around here is that I think that we should make things that other people enjoy and we should bring joy into people's lives. And I hope that you can go out and do that in your own shop or garage or wherever you're at. And I hope to be able to see you soon.